There's definitely been an increase in teen depression in the last five to 10 years, specifically in the last couple of years with the pandemic as well. But I think we were seeing an increase prior to that too, just due to the lack of coping and adaptive skills that our kids were taught. And actually, I think the pandemic really showed us the lack of skills that these kids had going into something so significant for them. We've actually seen almost a 25% increase in symptoms of anxiety and depression, as well as diagnoses of anxiety and depression, according to the research in younger kids under 11. And then we've seen even a bigger jump, almost 30% in kids about ages about 12 to 17. Parents need to know that young children and teens express depression and anxiety differently. When it comes to two through about seven, you're starting to think about their their outbursts or their tantrums, and you can start to see if that is due to some underlying emotion. And as they get older, sometimes you start to see that more and more. Other kids might show anxiety in the form of just getting kind of mean. So they might start to fight you. They might start to yell and complain about everything around them. In the teenage years, we tend to see more withdrawal, uh, they stop doing the things that they really like to do. They might go to the room often. Major causes of depression and stress in our kids and our teens have to do with a number of factors. One is genetic predisposition to having depression. Kids dealing with chronic illness, that can increase the likelihood of them having some mental health issues as well. Lack of coping and adaptive uh, strategies going into stressful events can also be an issue for our kids. The way to help keep your kids' brains healthy and stress-free is to work on mental health foundations. That means doing a couple things. The first is identifying emotions and not just simple emotions. And sometimes we have multiple emotions at one time and that's okay. The second one is identifying emotion management techniques. So this could be breathing, this could be journaling, this could be exercising, talking to a friend, talking to a parent, talking to a teacher. And the third is normalizing the ebb and flow of emotions. So we don't always feel good and that is okay. And that what they feel at that particular moment may not be the way that they feel in a minute or in five minutes or in a day, because in the way our brain works, we have to have insight in order to make change and to be able to manage anything. And then we also wanna monitor them to make sure that things are not getting worse than they already are. So these are times to not let our kids be alone, to really watch and listen for the silence and listen for anything that's happening with them and encourage them to really start to find forms of expression to speak out loud versus keeping things inside. Being there for our children is more important than ever and encouraging open communication will help all of us do just that.